Video Drone is an analog drone synth with two VCOs and two LFOs. These are coupled together with a lo-fi video screen in the form of an 8x8 LED matrix. Together, these allow you to essentially freeze audio so that you can create musical drones while also synthesizing shapes and patterns on the video screen. This video is going to focus on how the video is being driven and how that allows you to produce an image. It's also going to show some of the basic relationships between audio and video and some of the interactions you can get between those sections. The best way to show how the video works is to just slow it down to the point where you can see what's happening. And to do that, I've added a couple extra parts off screen, just a potentiometer and a resistor. And together, they've let me slow down the clock to the point where you can see what the video is doing. And so, as you can see, it's just a single LED on at a time, and it's constantly tracing through every single one of the LEDs in the LED matrix and so when you speed this back up it just looks like all the LEDs are on all at the same brightness. The video input drives the brightness of the LED and so whether that's from some external source driving through the external video in or if it's an internal source like one of the VCOs you're changing the brightness of whichever LED is currently active. And to show that I've taken the triangle out from LFO2 run it back into the video sum through a resistor and that allows you to see the brightness being slowly varied up and down. When you speed everything back up, you get different shapes and patterns due to the relationship between the frequency of whatever's driving the brightness of the LED and the clock driving the rate of the screen. It also shows a couple other helpful concepts of the frame rate and the line rate. And so a single frame is when the LED clocks through all 64 LEDs and a single line is when it clocks from the left to the right one time. The clock also outputs audio and so you can use it as a third oscillator or a sub oscillator but because of how the outputs are arranged it also works really well as a reference when you're setting up the video section. The outputs are line and frame which directly correspond to the line rate and the frame rate of the video. You also get an octave selector which lets you go up an octave or down an octave, but when that's set in the center, you're getting out the frame rate or the line rate. Knowing how the clock's audio out relates to the video lets you match the pitch of a VCO to that audio output and get a certain output on the video screen. So if I set this to frame and then match the pitch of VCO1, you can see now it's lining up with the frame so the square wave is lining up with the frame this way and you get a horizontal stripe. Then this also works with multiples, so we go up an octave, and you see it's lining up in the same direction but you get out two stripes. And you can also go up to the line rate. And there you can see it lines up with the line in this direction, and that gives you a vertical stripe. Small changes in VCO frequency show up as a difference in how quickly a waveform will move across the screen. So you can control the direction and just how quickly it moves. And so all three of the oscillators, both VCOs and the VC clock, have fine-tuned controls, and those go up or down about a semitone and a half, which allows for very careful control over the rate that the waveform is scrolling across the screen. Large changes in pitch will continuously vary the angle of the waveform on the screen, and it's easiest to see when you sweep it quickly Of course it's only stable in certain orientations and that's just due to the relationship between the clock and the VCO and the fact that the two are completely free running from one another. Frequency modulation lets you do the same things you can do with manual control of the frequency, only you can automate it with an LFO. Of 
course the output can differ quite a bit depending on the depth and the rate of that modulation. A shallow modulation at a slow rate will let you create sort of a wobble which looks a lot like what you can do with the fine tune control. So just a very small amount of depth dialed in you can get that small wobble back and forth. You can go a little bit deeper, make it a little bit wider of a wobble, and then keep it pretty subtle. And then if you go up higher in, in the depth, you can start to see the rotating pattern again. And that's probably clearer than just sweeping the pitch. And so you can very clearly see it's changing the angle as the pitch changes. If you increase the rate, you can get the modulation to line up with the screen, with the frame rate or the line rate, or some other relationship. And so if you start to increase the rate, you can see it starts to line up there, lines up there another way. Keep going higher though, you can get it to line up with the frame rate, allowing for a full cycle of modulation to show up in every frame, which means it's modulating the pitch, changing the angle, and so every single frame you get a complete modulation of angle from here all the way around and then back. Pulse width modulation also allows for a range of different effects depending on the depth and the rate that you're using. And so at a slow rate, you can see very clearly what pulse width modulation is doing, shifting where it's flipping from high to low, and so you get that varying duty cycle. And you can go all the way past 100%, and you can keep it really subtle as well. At higher rates, you can get the same kind of effect as you can get with frequency modulation in that you can go through a full cycle of modulation all in the space of a single frame. So if I bring back a pulse width modulated square and increase the rate, you see it starts to line up in a couple different places, but if you keep going, you can line it up with the frame rate. And so that allows it to modulate the square all the way from almost 0% to almost 100% only in the space and time that it takes to go through a single frame. Both LFOs have three different modulation options. And so for LFO 1, the first two are PWM or FM going to VCO 1 and LFO 2 can do the same PWM or FM to VCO 2. The third option on both of the LFOs is different. So for LFO2, you can frequency modulate VCO1, which lets you run two sources into one destination, and that can sound really good and op opens up some other interesting possibilities. The third option for LFO1 is to frequency modulate the clock, and that allows for another set of options in that you can modulate the look of the video without changing the sound of the VCO. So for example, if I bring up a square wave and start to modulate the clock's frequency, you can see it's doing the same thing that was happening when you modulate the VCO's frequency, just now you can't hear any difference. Then if you switch the selector so that you're switching between these two, now you can hear it's modulating the VCO and you can hear it again. To show how the external video in works, I've hooked up a cheap keyboard, a Yamaha PSS-170, and so here you can see that it lets you do many of the same sorts of things that you would do with just the internal oscillators, but now you can build up complex chords and you can try different combinations very quickly. This opens up a large range of different options, especially when you start using it with a modular system or different types of keyboards or other types of instruments as well. Then the internal modulation still works, so you can 
add in some frequency modulation modulating the clock and you can get another set of possibilities there with the external video in you can use video drone like a music visualizer meaning you can just feed in any sort of arbitrary recorded music and see what pops up it works especially well for drone music which isn't too surprising but it also works with other styles uh, things with lots of bass or more rhythmic uh, music it'll still create some interesting results but I think it's even more powerful to use the external video in to synthesize shapes and patterns in the same way you would with the internal VCOs and so one thing I was messing around with earlier was this patch which uses the same keyboard and it seems to be very touchy to the clock rate because it goes away even just a little bit outside of this very narrow range I'm not exactly sure why that's happening but looks very cool and it's a bit unique